Hi, Algebra 1 students. We're on Lesson 69. It is a very important lesson that you're going to be using for a long, long time in your algebra careers. And what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to factor trinomials. Now, just to remind you, a trinomial is a very common event. You've worked with them in the past. And they take this form. Ranger, stop scratching. They take this form, ax squared plus bx plus c. That is important to notice that there's always an x squared term, and there's an x term, and then there's a plain coefficient at the end. There's just a, a, basic, a plain number hanging by himself down at the end. That is what makes a trinomial. Notice the tri comes from the fact that we have three parts, three binomials, okay? Now, we're going to learn, trinomials are formed when we have a pair of binomials that we're multiplying together. They can be plus or minus here, but we always have a pair of binomials that have an x plus or minus a plain number, okay? It doesn't necessarily correspond to those numbers, so I'm going to put a d and an e here just to show you that they're different numbers. But what we've learned how to do is we've learned how to multiply the binomials, haven't we? So that you can find the trinomial. Now we're going to learn to go backwards. So let's look at an example so that I can show you exactly what I mean. Example 69.1 tells us to factor this trinomial. x squared minus 14x minus 15. Notice that we have got our factor, or not our factor, we've got our trinomial following this form. We've got an x squared term, and we don't really have a number in front of it, but that's an invisible one, right? We could call that an invisible one in front of it, plus another number in front of an x, and this time our number happens to be a negative number. It's a negative 14, but that's okay. The signs don't matter. And then we've got another number hanging out here at the end. So what we know is that there are a pair of binomial, there are a pair of binomials, yes, I said the right thing, that we can use to multiply that would give us that answer, and we have to figure out what they are. So we know that it's going to look like this. We know that there are going to be x's at the beginning of each of those binomials, and we know there's going to be either a plus or a minus sign, and then we know there's going to be numbers at the end. The question is, what numbers and what signs? Here's the way that we figure it out. This is the magic step. We look. I'm just going to write it, and then I'll tell you about it. Okay, very important step that we have to do in order to factor this binomial. We're looking for two numbers that will multiply together to equal C, this last number down here, and that will add to equal B, this middle number. And I'm going to put a star down here at the bottom, and I'm going to write signs matter. And what I mean by that is that we have to take positive and negative signs into account. So here's how we start. We start by listing pairs of numbers that will multiply to equal minus 15. So I'm going to write that right here in this little column to the side. Make sure you guys can see it. Yep, I'm right at the edge there. Okay, so what are some numbers that multiply to equal minus 15? Oh, Mrs. Straker, I know one. How about minus 3? and 5. Yes, that's right. Those are two numbers that multiply to equal minus 15. How about also minus 5 and positive 3? That would work too, wouldn't it? And then the only other pair of numbers would be 1 and negative 15 or negative 1 and positive 15. Those are the only numbers that will multiply to equal negative 15. So now what we do is we look among these numbers and we look for the pair, there will be one pair, that will also add 
to equal b. b is negative 14. So now we're looking for the, through these numbers for a pair of numbers that will add up to negative 14. And we can see right here, okay, if we combine 5 and negative 3, that's 2. If we combine negative 5 and 3, that's negative 2. Okay, so these guys are not going to do it for us. They fulfill the first requirement, but they don't make the second. All right, the second, the third pair is 1 and negative 15. If we add 1 and negative 15, we get negative 14. That is our money winner right there. That's the pair we want. And let's just check negative 1 and positive 15. That would add to positive 14. So the number is right, but the sign is wrong. So that's why I wrote this here to remind you. The sign matters. We need the right sign. So our pair, I'm going to squiggle him out so we don't, like, we don't like him. Our magical pair of numbers is 1 and negative 15. Positive 1 and negative 15. I'm going to put the positive there just to make it super clear. Now, here's what we do, you guys. We have our little binomials all set up here. And all we have to do is take the sign and the number and copy them into the binomial framework. And that is the pair of numbers that if we multiplied them, we would get that trinomial as our product. And if you don't believe me, you can try it and do that. But I promise you it will work. So this is how we factor trinomials. Let's do another one. Example 69.2. This time we're going to factor x squared plus 3x minus 10. All right? Remember, this is our a, this is our b, this is our c. And we can set up our dudes right away. We know we're always going to have an x here. And now we're looking for the numbers and the signs to fill in to complete these binomials like we did before. So let's make our list. And in, as you guys get stronger at doing these, you won't have to make the chart quite so blatantly. You can do it in your head. But for now, this is the best way to proceed is write down the number. Make sure you include the sign that you have to multiply to and then write down all the pairs you can think of. So when I think of 10, I think of 2 times 5. But in order for it to be negative 10, one of them is going to have to be negative or the other, okay? And then the only other pair I can think of is 1 and negative 10 or negative 1 and 10. All right? So now we're looking among these pairs for the difference that matches to that number. Positive 3. So we can immediately rule out the 1 and 10 because that's not going to get us to minus 3. Test them if you need to. But I can tell just by looking, there's no way that 1 and 10 are going to come to a difference of 3. 2 and 5, however, are going to give me a difference of 3. I want positive 3. So that tells me, let's see, negative 5 and positive 2. That's going to be negative 3. I don't want that. It's negative 2 and 5 that is our money winner. I don't know why I always say that, but I always do. Um, 5 and negative 2 multiply to negative 10 and add to positive 3. So again, I just copy the signs and the numbers over into my binomials. The order doesn't matter. If you wrote this down as x plus 5, if you wrote this instead, as long as the signs and the numbers are in the right places, it doesn't matter which order these in because multiplication doesn't matter, which is wonderful news, isn't it? So that shows us exactly how these work. There are no more tricks to this. There's nothing that makes it any harder. So I want you guys to go ahead and try example 69.3 and example 69.4. And again, just make your little chart and carefully look through these and find the pair that set the pair of numbers that satisfies this requirement. And then you just write them in. We're going to be doing this, you guys, like I said, for many, many, many lessons to come. So it might seem kind of confusing now, but trust me, before long you will be thinking these are actually kind of cute and fun. So go ahead and work the examples right now. And good luck to you.